Hello there. Welcome to another Home Automator tutorial. This tutorial is a part of an ongoing Quickies for Home Assistant series, and you can find more by clicking the card above or in the descriptions below. In today's tutorial, we will be installing Home Assistant Community Store, better known to the community as Hex. Since this is a Quickie, we're not gonna waste time for pleasantries, and so let's install Hex. Before we start, all the code used on this channel, including this tutorial, is published on my GitHub page. You'll find the link in the description below. And if you like this tutorial, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Before this tutorial, there are some required software that we need to have. Firstly, obviously, is going to be Home Assistant. Now, if you do not have Home Assistant, I have a tutorial that will be linked below for you to have a look on how to do so. The next one is the Advanced SSH and Terminal Add-on. Again, I have a tutorial that will be linked below. And lastly, you will need a GitHub account. Now, if you don't have a GitHub account, I recommend that you pause this video and go and do one first. Before we start the installation of Hex, a disclaimer. Hex is not an official add-on for Home Assistant. It is not supported by the developers of Home Assistant Nabucasa. You install Hex at your own risks. Having said that, I'm relatively careful of what I install on my machines. And Hex so far has not failed me. Besides, the code is always available for you to have a look at on GitHub. Hex is a community-driven integration and front-end component store that extends the Home Assistant ecosystem. So before you give up on integrating a new smart home device and you cannot find that integration inside of Home Assistant, have a look at Hex. It might just have it for you. I will be using the Hex integration and front-end components in both my Home Assistant and ESP Home tutorials going forward. Let's move on to the installation. Hex, unlike other add-ons, is not installed through the add-on store. Is not installed through the add-on store. What we have to do is go to the Hex website, and uh, from there we have to get this command here, which I will leave in the description below, and on the uh, and on my GitHub with all of the explanations. So we're going to copy this. We are going to go back to Home Assistant. And we are going to go to uh, Settings and Add-ons. And from there, we're going to go into the Advanced SSH and Web Terminal. I hope that you've installed it already. If not, I will have a link here. and. Uh, and in the description. Okay, we are going to start it. I see mine is already started. A good idea is to stop it when you're not using it. It's a good security practice. We're going to open the web API, and you can see here that we have the Home Assistant terminal, and we're going to paste that command. So to explain to you what this command does, wget a zero dash https colon whack whack get hex dot xyz is basically telling the system to download the file. After the pipe, bash tells it to execute it. So to download 
a script and then it's going to execute that script. Okay, let's enter and you can see it's downloading. There you are. It's unpacking it and then it's installing it. And it does tell you that the minimum version of Home Assistant has to be 2023.6. Okay. One of the good thing is it does remove its zip files, so it keeps itself clean. Now you're going to say, but how does this update? Well, it actually updates itself. Uh, I can't show you that in the moment, but it will do just that like any other integration because it is not an add-on, it's an integration. So from here, what we are going to do is go to developer tools, check configuration, always good habit, and then we are going to restart. And we're not going to do a quick reload, we're going to do a restart of Home Assistant, and here we go. A few moments later. Okay, Home Assistant has been restarted. And what I usually do at this point in time, I restart a second time. Why do I do that? Because I've had some issues with Hex not being activated on the first restart. There we are. Now we can go to settings device and services, and we are going to add an integration. The integration is going to be called Hex. As you can see, Hex is here. A nice thing about the new version of Home Assistant is that it actually tells you it's a custom integration. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on it, and it's going to ask us a whole bunch of questions. You have to say yes to all of them and please read them and if you agree with them just click now i am installing the experimental one simply because i've had no problems with it whatsoever and it's changed things so i'd rather not redo the video three or four times okay let's submit it at this point in time i would have told you that you need a github login i hope that you went and did that because now we need it so we are going to click on github.com login devices. And here it is. We have to go back, get the code, and input the code over here. And then continue. We have to authorize X. Done. And that's it. Hex is now activated on our Home Assistant install. You may want to, as I often show, put uh, this into system, because to me, it's part of the system. Click Finish. And uh, as a matter of good practice again, when we do install one of these, check configuration and restart. Restart, restart. Okay, I will now see you on the other side and show you a bit of how we go about adding some front end elements and we'll talk about adding other integrations in other videos. Okay. Now that we've got Hex installed, let's install something from Hex. And I think that the first thing that we're going to install is the horseshoe card. And simply because I am going to use it quite extensively. Warning, it's YAML only, but I'll show you a little trick that we can use. Okay, so let's go. We're going to go into Hex. And from here, we are going to go to the search bar and we are going to type horse. And here it is, flexible horseshoe card for Lovelace. We're going to click on it and we are going to download and again download. This will take a second to install. 
there we are. It is going to ask us to reload. Now that it is reloaded, one thing that I would highly recommend is that you go to the creator's GitHub. And here is the horseshoe card. OK, and once you're here, click on the start. I mean, I've already done it, as you can see. It also tells the creator that you like what he's done. So I'm going to keep this instance open. And what we are going to do is we are going to find the entity that we are going to be using. Now, I know it's a weather entity. And let me show you why we will need that entity. OK, we're going to go to the dashboard, edit, add a card, and we are going to go all the way down and click on manual. Now, this is YAML code. Let me show you why we need the entity. So I'm going to scroll down to here. I'm going to copy this code. By the way, here is the layout and how it works. And we're going to go back here and we are going to paste the code. Now you can see it says that the card type is not found, which is incorrect. And let me show you what we have to do. We have to actually take the dash space before it, because hey, do you put, put this into one of the YAML files, and we will do that later into Home Assistant, it would need the dash. OK, so we're going to select everything to the bottom and tab one back. Once that is done, we have a bit of a problem here. It says weather dark sky, but I haven't got dark, dark sky installed. So what we're going to do is go to the settings, device and services, and open weather map, which is the one that I have installed. And we're going to click on that. Two services. We're going to open one of the two services. It doesn't matter which one. We're going to go and scroll down to temperature. Click on temperature. Click on the range. And here you will see entity ID, which is what we require. And we are going to copy it. As you can see, it is now copied to the clipboard. After that, we can go back and close, go back to the code. And we are going to take this, and we are going to put it in. Then we're going to change this, because it is Johannesburg. It should show us by now a preview. However, it doesn't always work. But if I save it, there you are. This is what it looks like. Yes, it's a bit big. I agree with you. But we'll fix all of that later. So this is everything that you need to know about Hex and installing a UI component. You can also install various integrations. Some of them are not supported in the default installation of Home Assistant. And I will approach those at a later stage as well. We will be using various Lovelace front-end components in the future and some integration, starting as I've shown you today with the horseshoe car. Now, a lot of upcoming tutorials are going to be using these cards. The first one is the upcoming Let's Add to Our Sensor Part 3 air quality sensor with an automation. Anyway, that's a wrap for today. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that notification button so that you never miss one of my videos. This was Pascal signing off. See you in the next tutorial.